Welcome to the EchoCast. I am Bon, and I am here to chat with you about video games, gaming, news, speculation, and much more. This week, we'll be talking about Sony remaking more modern games, Halo switching engines, CD Projekt Red announcing everything, and much, much more. A few things before we get into the show. Thank you to the supporter level patrons, PK the Dawn and Caged Nephilim, and a special thanks to producer level patron, Hassan. If you're interested in supporting this show, my other content, and getting some extra perks, please check out patreon.com slash Bon Diesel. Subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform, and if you're on Spotify or iTunes, please rate the podcast five stars on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment down below with your thoughts, questions for next week, or just say hi. All of those things help this video get noticed on YouTube, get more people listening and more people talking, which is the whole point here. I want to talk about games with you if you're nice. Okay. Gaming news. Let's jump into it. So uh, rumors uh, came out in a potential leak that Sony is remaking Horizon Zero Dawn. So this uh, follows uh, kind of a series of controversies with some of this kind of thing. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, this is not the, we just had Horizon Forbidden West that came out earlier this year. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn came out in 2017 was pretty well regarded uh, and is, uh, you know, considered, I would say, one of the tentpole Sony games now. Um, and this is kind of coming along with some questions about how Sony seems to be remaking a lot of games, uh, but isn't at least announcing a lot of new stuff. Um, and it basically is impossible to ignore that they seem to be remaking games to go along with other media. So uh, The Last of Us uh, has a, a show about to come out on HBO, I believe, and they just released a The Last of Us remake. Um, now, I will say, from what I've seen, the remake of The Last of Us is pretty substantial. Like, it's not like they, um, like the, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, uh, it, mostly for Mass Effect 1, but a little bit in 2 and 3. They basically up the, the textures to 4K, you know, had good frame rates on the newer systems. Um, but it's still the old game, just with some minor mechanical changes and a visual buff, right? where The Last of Us was they remade a pretty big chunk of the game um, or m like most of the assets and stuff while the story remained the same. And so even though most of the reviews of The Last of Us remake were like, this is still like the 10 out of 10 game, it was uh, originally, uh, and it, it's actually been remastered once before for the PS4, that people were still kind of like, it, it just doesn't add anything. If you've never played the game, it's the best way to play it, but it didn't revolutionize anything. It's just a really good remake. And I think what's happening um, here is that uh, I believe there's a rumored Horizon Zero Dawn show coming. And so it kind of seems like Sony can't keep its hand out of the cookie jar and is like, well, if we're going to have a show, we might as well put out a, a version of the game. Obviously, it, the show is probably going to come before they're ready for the third Horizon Zero Dawn game. And so they're going to do a remake of a game that's five years old that runs at 4K 60 FPS on modern consoles. So uh, this also, at least in small part, has to be backed or at least a little bit supported by the fact that cyberpunk 2077 is seeing a renaissance for that game uh, in all-time higher player counts because netflix just released a uh, cyberpunk anime that apparently is extremely good and is driving a lot of attention and a lot of players to a like mostly fixed 
Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I will say, as kind of a side tangent, it, it is weird how much I've seen people, this is like really clouded people's outlook on Cyberpunk. Um, Cyberpunk is much better than it used to be. It's in a very playable state. It does have a very good story, but it's still pretty shallow. And like, it's it's still like not what it was supposed to be or what it should have been, but it is better than the hot mess that released you know, a couple years ago. So every time I see like, oh wow, Cyberpunk has pulled a No Man's Sky, which we'll talk about No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky took a arguably bad product and has made it one of the most impressive games I've ever seen. Easily the best supported game that's ever been made. Um, and Cyberpunk isn't that. Cyberpunk was a bad game with a good story that is now a pretty good game with a good story. Um, it's still a mediocre RPG. It's still, again, a mile wide and an inch deep. But um, I can't help but feel like that that success of you know and the change of narrative and stuff like that. Oh, it, I, I imagine that didn't factor into this remake of Horizon Zero Dawn because it's so recent and that uh, that decision would have been made a while ago for the remake. But I guarantee there's a bunch of people at Sony pointing at Cyberpunk being like, hey, that's what we want. Uh, and Horizon has the benefit of being generally considered a pretty good game. Um, I don't really think it's on the same level as Uncharted and The Last of Us and uh, God of War. And I, I, I think it's like a B tier game in their lineup, but it's still very good and has been insanely successful. So Sony doing remake things. I, I've already been making a joke about how the next Sony project after Ragnarok is going to be that they're remaking Ragnarok. <laughs> Maybe I just think I'm funny. Okay, next story. Halo is potentially switching to Unreal Engine 5. So this story dropped this week, and it seems to be pretty well supported. A lot of the people in the industry who tend to get some of these leaks and rumors um, all seem to be like kind of half-heartedly getting behind this and, and being like, yeah, this is probably happening. Um, so... I believe it's the Starstream engine or something that uh, Halo Infinite uh, uses, and I believe was basically made for that game. Um, and then, you know, if you've paid attention to Halo since its release, basically there's been little to no content. And there's been a lot of rumors over the last almost year um, that devs are really frustrated that the engine is basically really hard to work with. Um, something I saw recently is people were like, they don't need to switch engines. Um, someone used the beta of Forge, which is um, like Halo's like creator mode, uh, which has always been a really big deal. Well, someone used Forge to make Andy's room from Toy Story, and it looked amazing. Well, so to answer that, in case you don't know, everything I've heard, and I've even I've seen articles about it, is that devs uh, on Halo have complained that the forge system that they developed and made uh, so that players can make levels and stuff is more intuitive and useful than their own systems to make content for halo infinite and so um there there even seems to be a frustration internally of you know why in the world uh are, are the tools of this engine easier to use through this consumer facing uh ui and this consumer facing system than our own internal systems like that doesn't make sense that's not a great sign right so now these rumors come out that they may be switching to unreal engine 5. Uh, i think what kind of kicked this off is that there is another studio i can't remember off the top of my head um, but there's another studio supposedly working on a uh, like a battle royale mode for halo and the rumor is, is that it's it's Unreal Engine 5, that um, it's going to look like Halo. It's supposed to feel like Halo, but it's going to be in a different engine is the rumor. And then uh, things have spread since then through rumors and so on that that may be a decision being made, uh, you know, for the whole series moving forward. And so there's, I think, two things to kind of address with that. So the one thing being that um 
you know, what does that mean for Halo Infinite? Halo Infinite was sold as a 10 year project that they were going to release it and then support it for 10 years. And I don't think that's the plan anymore. I have nothing to support that. We haven't really seen any really clear rumors that that isn't going to happen. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will definitely happen. Uh, I'm not hopeful if you want me to be totally honest, but I, I just, I think that, you know, the game was received so well when it came out and like, I really enjoyed the story, but we're, um, we're coming up on a year that that game has been out and we, there's not even a whiff that there's more story content coming. Um, they, they've been having these like six to nine month seasons, which no one's happy with. Um, and they haven't, they just haven't been doing stuff to pull people in and keep them. And so if one of the big issues with Halo Infinite is the fact that content is just slow to be made. If they start investing a lot of resources into switching Halo to Unreal Engine 5, I wouldn't be surprised if that 10 year plan for Halo turns into a three or four year plan where they basically finish stuff they've planned already and then they move on. Um, so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see that that 10 year plan, in my opinion, would have been so dependent on infinite doing really well. in it's like first year and like really establishing itself and like grabbing this like very dedicated fan base. And I don't think they've done that. And so I have to imagine there's someone at 343 and Microsoft and Xbox being like, hey, like maybe that's not the call. Maybe we do need, you know halo six or whatever you know whatever will be next so i'm curious to what happens with that uh, the other part of this is why are so many people moving to unreal engine 5 so many devs um, even some publishers are moving to it uh, in a big way which we'll talk about in the next story but you know why is this happening so I, I had my own ideas and, and I had chatted with some people and, and heard some people talk about this, but on my Twitter, I posted this exact question. Why are so many devs and studios moving to this new engine? And I got a bunch of really awesome responses from a bunch of devs. And then I reached out privately to a few devs that I know to get their take. And uh, one really cool person who responded, uh, well, there are a couple people from Unreal Engine like that work for Epic uh, and on Unreal who responded, and that was super cool. And then there, uh, the, uh, the, the co-founder of BioWare responded. Uh, he's not, he, he left BioWare before they even released uh, Mass Effect 1, I believe. So as much as I would have loved to fangirl and, and try to, uh, to be like, hey, let's talk about stuff. Uh, that he was more with the uh, their older titles. They're the more like the the before EA acquisition Bioware uh, titles. So, uh, which is still what he's doing now with his current studio. He's still doing those kind of more legacy type games. Um, and so, what I'll say is, I'm going to um, compile all of those answers I got into a video, hopefully to be released next Thursday. Um, but what I can just kind of talk about off the top of my head is the general consensus was just, it's easier to use someone else's stuff. Uh, their engineers are working on that so that your engineers can focus on other stuff. Um, it, it's just, it's cheaper, um, depending on your type of game and, 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 and it depends on a lot of things, but the creation and maintenance of a proprietary engine, your own just, is really expensive because of the you have to have a whole department for it basically uh and then you know all those growing pains and um and what i've noticed is a lot of proprietary engines tend to peak during a generation but most dev studios most studios and publishers just don't have the ability to keep an engine top notch for multiple generations I think Ubisoft might be in the midst of doing that with Snowdrop. Um, I think that Snowdrop was a top tier engine, at least visually and mechanically uh, during the last generation of consoles and is um, likely with um, the Avatar game, 
um, with the Star Wars game and supposedly uh, like the Splinter Cell remake and things like that, um, all being on Snowdrop, very well may bring Snowdrop to this Gen 2 and show some of that success. But that's not common. So the common thread basically was it's cheaper, it's easier. And the one really common thread I saw is that if you're using a proprietary engine, new hires basically have to be taught from scratch how to use your specific engine. Uh, on the subject of using like an Unreal 5, um, it means that a studio can hire people and within maybe days or at least weeks, be diving right in and, and contributing really quickly because it's a it's a standard, right? Um, anyone coming into game dev right now has probably worked in Unreal. They've probably worked in Unity as well, as well as maybe some other engines, but they've probably worked in Unreal. And even if it, if it was Unreal 4, they, you know, that those skills transition well. So um, it was a really interesting question to pose. It was obviously spurred by this Halo uh, news, um, but I am excited to make like a, a more um, thoughtful and more uh, a detailed video about that to hopefully come next week um, to kind of spotlight some of the answers I got. Uh, it was really cool because there were people from like AAA studios down to like single person developers who answered. So it was really fun to kind of see those perspectives. And it was honestly surprising how similar the answers were, no matter who, uh, who it was or what their background was. Uh, so, uh, speaking of, uh, <laughs> publishers moving to Unreal Engine 5, CD Projekt Red announced a whole bunch of games. So they announced three Witcher projects, two cyberpunk projects, and one new IP. Um, to break it down, the Witcher projects, I believe one of them is the remake of Witcher 3, or the like the big like update to it that was originally outsourced and now they're doing in-house. Um, the second one, was a game, uh, the, the next Witcher game, which they've already announced, is going to Unreal Engine 5, and they're dropping their own engine from that. Uh, you know, they're not going to use it anymore. And then the third, they didn't really detail. With Cyberpunk, um, that one's a little more interesting. Um, they announced two projects. I suspect, I, I think one of them is the current, like the, the content that's coming soon. The other one, I bet, is not like a sequel to Cyberpunk 2077. I'm willing to bet it's actually the this multiplayer mode that was rumored a long time ago, and they're gonna put it out as like a, uh, like a like a spinoff or like its own game. That's just my guess, but we'll have to wait and see. And then the new IP they didn't really expand on. Um, so there was a big question I saw of people being like, "Why are they doing? Like, why are they announcing all of this?" Because uh, they just released a game that was in development for a long time and it didn't really show. Um, it's been a while since The Witcher 3 came out. You know, if anything, it's arguable that them having their fingers in so many projects it actually seems like a negative where I feel like a lot of people would be like, if they just said, oh, we're focusing 100% on the next Witcher game. I feel like people would be more comforted by that because I know CDPR is like a pretty big studio and I think they're actually opening new studios with this announcement. But I, I just, I don't think this is a studio where people were like, I want to hear that they uh, are uh, doing a bunch of stuff. I feel like this was a studio that, especially after Cyberpunk, people would have been totally okay with them not announcing all of this and maybe even saying that, oh, we are laser focused in on this one thing. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? My prediction uh, is that there was recently, uh, I covered it, I think last week, a story about Saudi Arabia investing many billions into the gaming sphere. Uh, and one of those uh, rumored ac uh, things was going to be an acquisition of around $13 billion. Um, for, so what I'm wondering is if this was a ploy to maybe uh, boost their value a little bit because there may be ongoing uh, acquisition discussions potentially with uh, Saudi Arabia 
uh, or anyone else really. Um, I believe when I looked it up, like the market cap or what CDPR could be worth was around like eight or nine billion. And so a premium of four or five, six billion on top of that, um, I think it could fit. Um, but that's a 100% speculation uh, guess from me. So if I'm right, cool. I'm probably not. But I do think it's weird that they announced all of these projects because, like I said, I don't know many people who want to hear that CDPR is probably in over their head. We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the next story is Need for Speed Unbound released a teaser trailer. Uh, so basically, they released this trailer where this um, th this game has real like uh, Need for Speed Underground vibes, except that it has this like super unique art style of having basically like cartoonish uh, characters. Um, slightly stylized, but still pretty realistic looking like environments and cars. And then also having these, uh, like embellishments that happen. Like when you go off a ramp, these like kind of anime cartoon wings pop up beside your car. Uh, when you, when you do certain things, you have like motion graphics and stuff like that. I thought it looked really, really, really cool. Um, the thing it made me think of was um, either the Spider-Verse uh, movie that came out a few years ago, um, some of its um, art styling, or um, if you've ever seen the League of Legends KDA music videos where they have this like girl group uh, that's like this whole like digital girl group thing that has these like super great songs that are like uh, super catchy. Uh, I don't, I've never even, I've never even watched a match of League of Legends and I love their music videos. I, every time there's a new one, I listen, but the art style they use in their videos was very similar to what they're seem to be going for in this need for speed thing. And honestly, I'm here for it because need for speed is in a weird spot. Their last few games, they tried to go with this, like, uh, this like grungy, realistic kind of aesthetic and stuff. And it just didn't work. Um, and so now if you're making a, a racing game or a car, like a driving game that isn't supposed to be like Forza or Gran Turismo, um, you know, if you're going more the, the way of like, like Forza Horizon or something like that, well, you can't just do Forza Horizon because Forza Horizon had, is, is, is that game now. And so you have to do something different. And this looks like that different. This looks like that, you know, uh, attempt to do something different than anyone else is doing something that looks really cool. We'll see if it is. Um, and, and I'm here for it. I think that was a awesome trailer and I'm really excited to see more from that game and we'll see more because it comes out in like a month and a half. That's like a big scary thing for a lot of people right now is, Oh my God, why did they sit on this game until like literally weeks left until it comes out? Hey, um, EA is in a weird spot. Um, they, they've had their annual sports titles this year and then they have like this, uh, you know, they, they might have Dreadwolf next year. They, they will probably have a mass effect game in three or four years, maybe less. We'll see. Um, but they don't have a lot coming. They, they have the Jedi survivor game coming, but that is next year. Um, so they're putting out something. I think it looks really cool. I'm excited to check it out. Something else I'm maybe excited to check out, we'll have to wait and see, is another No Man's Sky update. Um, it's the game that keeps on giving. It is just crazy. Um, the big part of this update is that it's on Switch. And from the last thing I read is I figured on Switch it would be a streaming game. Uh, if you don't know on Switch, the, the way that they bring a lot of like modern console games to Switch is using a streaming service. Um, and I've heard it's okay, but if, the, if you know anything about Nintendo's ineptness with online services, it's not the best solution. But supposedly this is running on the native hardware. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, and then it also comes with a whole bunch of new features. Um, you can look them up. Every one of their patches has this like crazy list of stuff 
the big one for me on this one is that you can do a custom game mode. Um, so I played this, it was, I think it was earlier this year. I got really into No Man's Sky, but it just gets to a point where the resource collection and some of the kind of fetch quest and kind of redundant uh, story stuff, I just got kind of tired. Um, but what I think this is going to allow you to do is to just customize your your game. And so they have like a creator mode that just gives you everything. But that seems like too easy. So what it seems like I can probably do is like give myself unlimited resources, um, but still kind of force myself to go through the rest of the steps of the game, which is I'm fine with. I enjoy that. I just don't like like, oh, I need one more of this element. I better go find this element. OK, now I have it gotta go back and it's just some of that stuff just i don't find very fun about that game um and now it looks like they have a solution for that so if you played no man's sky before you enjoyed it before and you have any inkling at all to jump back in and mess around with it it seems like this is your chance so have at it um, a quick update on the Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Um, so the Brazil uh, Review Authority has uh, approved the deal. And so at least in Brazil, uh, the, the deal has been approved and can go through. Um, this is notable because um, Brazil has a really um, uh, transparent uh, system for this. And so a bunch of the kind of catfighting that happened between Sony and Microsoft um, happened around the brazil review um and so the fact that it's over and that they approved it with no recommendations um isn't that surprising uh, i believe there was even kind of a caddy uh line in the approval that said that you know they're they're approving the deal because they are not concerned about the um something like the uh, the whims of of another competing company definitely throwing shade at sony um this isn't over. Um, there are rumors that the approval in the United States is pretty close, that it's probably about to happen, um, but that there is a deeper review happening uh, in in, uh, in England and that there is some kind of grumbling that um, knowing that uh, the head of Sony, the head of Xbox or <laughs> the head of PlayStation is from there and is a very wealthy person there who wields probably some power in the government, that there is some thought that there may be a little bit of shenanigans going on there but the the most i've seen is that they they think that there may be some request uh, by them to some concessions by xbox uh, and blizzard and activision um, but that the deal is probably going to go through i've i'm yet to see anyone credible really be like uh, i don't know this might be in trouble i don't think it's going to happen it seems like it's going to happen um it seems like there's a pretty decent chance though that uh, the approval in England uh, and in maybe other parts of Europe may require some type of concession, but we'll have to wait and see. So uh, a few quick stories, uh, fandom uh, who is a big Wikipedia uh, conglomerate uh, has acquired a whole bunch of gaming related websites and groups, including GameSpot, GameFAQs, Giant Bomb, and a bunch more. Um, this is close to me. I love Giant Bomb, um, Jeff Grubb, um, and a bunch of the other people there. Uh, ever since they kind of did a revamp uh, a couple of month or a couple of months ago, it's like really been some of my favorite content to get into on top of kind of funny as well. So super exciting um, or at least interesting. Um, Fandom is actually a company I don't like. Um, a couple of wikis that I like a lot. They acquired them and just ruined them with their awful corporate wiki format it's they're so bad but i will say that all of the people that work at these companies um maybe it's just because it's new and fun and they aren't scared yet but no one seemed like they were freaking out if anything people like jeff grubb and others were being like this is a good thing because the company who had this before didn't know what to do with us and fandom whether you like them or not for their own stuff um understands the business that these publications and these groups are in um and like one thing jeff grubb talked about is that there were things that giant bomb was trying to get from their previous owner that that owner it was like a um it was like a hedge fund kind of thing um and um 
they just didn't really seem to know how to handle the request from Giant Bomb, where a company like Fandom, in theory, who's already kind of within the gaming sphere, should know. And so the overall attitude around it was pretty positive. Uh, we'll have to see if that lasts. I certainly hope it does, because all of the publications that they picked up, especially Giant Bomb, um, are great. And I hope that they continue to, to be that way. Uh, we had a Dead Space teaser trailer. Um, there's a remake coming out in January of the original Dead Space. Um, I thought it looked really, really good and nasty and exactly what it should be. This That remake is going to suffer from kind of a unique situation where I know myself and I think a lot of other people, when you think back to like the 360, like uh, the PS3 days and playing Dead Space, you remember it looking like really, really good. So when you watch this trailer, I think a lot of people will see this Dead Space trailer and be like, I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't look that much better than the original. Well, I do dare you, if you feel that way, I do dare you to go back and watch OG Dead Space uh, video uh, videos and footage. It does not look very good. And so uh, there were some comparison videos and screenshots of the Dead Space remake and the original Dead Space. It does a pretty good job of showing just how good the, the new version looks, but it especially is noticeable in movement. Um, it's just like the animations and the frame rate and everything just looks so much better on this remake. And I'm not really into like scary, squishy horror games. Um, but I feel like I have to at least try this out. I'm, uh, I'm willing to, to give it a go. Uh, lots of people have been trying to give Overwatch 2 a go, but having issues. Um, so if you don't know, Overwatch uh, 1 was shut down this week, and then the next day, Overwatch 2 released. This has been panned a lot because Overwatch 2 seems more like a 1.5 than a true sequel, and they've changed a bunch of things from it being kind of like a pay once and then loot box thing to it's like a i think it's like a free to play uh like battle pass supported game now where a lot of ways that you acquire new characters and stuff have changed and the game itself just doesn't seem that much different they, they it's 5v5 instead of 6v6 now there's limits on the makeup of the teams and stuff but it seems like it just wasn't really what a lot of people were asking for and then when it released per usual for these live service online co-op games it i think even to this day this has been multiple days since it released is having issues with people connecting getting kicked from servers and stuff like that so um it's been kind of an interesting thing to, to follow from the outside i don't really care about games like overwatch um, but i do think it's interesting to watch another live game live game come out and watching it just kind of crash and burn because they uh, supposedly they had a couple of DDo, uh, DDoS attacks uh, as well as a bunch of other issues uh, and so so yeah we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that uh, then the last story of this uh, section of the show is uh, Kojima uh, Kojima teases more so um, it, there's rumors that Kojima right now, he's been posting a bunch of cryptic stuff. A lot of people seem to think that it's a Death Stranding sequel um, upcoming announcement. It might be, man, but uh, Kojima, he's, he's a wild card. And I just don't think that you should even try to predict what he's going to do. Because I think the more sure you are of what Kojima is doing the the mo the more likely you are to be wrong so we'll uh, we'll have to see what happens with that i am definitely curious i'm not as like hyper into fandom with kojima as other people are i love the metal gear solid games i had zero interest in death stranding uh and so i really hope that this is like a new project that maybe is more along the lines of a game i would prefer but it definitely seems like Kojima is going down that kind of artsy kind of film path and getting away from the like one of the best tactical shooting stealthy games ever. And like Metal Gear Solid 5 is an incomplete game. It like doesn't have a proper ending. They didn't finish it because Kojima left. But it still might be one of if not the best games ever made it's just such a good game it's so deep it has such deep 
interconnected mechanics and stuff. It's just, it's so good. And that game, Metal Gear Solid V loaded up on a modern console. There's not many games that have come out since then. And even in the last couple of years that rivaled that game's graphics. And it's, it's like just its mechanics and its animations and just its AI. It's just, that game is just so crazy. Like it will, it's going to be good forever which is weird, especially for the type of game it is. So Kojima's doing something. Uh, my method of dealing with it is just waiting to find out what it is because trying to guess Kojima is a fool's errand. What's not a fool's errand is uh, enjoying this show. And if you are enjoying this show uh, and my other content, my videos, my Twitch, and so on, uh, and you want to support those endeavors, check out patreon.com slash bondiesel. Uh, there's a, I think, 3 5 and $10 tier that all get you, you know, some unique bonuses and perks. Uh, or if you have like Amazon Prime and you want to subscribe to me over at twitch.tv slash bondiesel so you have some cool emotes when I stream. And if you just want to support what I'm doing, please do that. So patreon.com slash bondiesel to support that way or twitch.tv slash bondiesel for your prime subs or if you just want to sub normally that's super cool too okay so for my the division and mass effect sections these are very slim there wasn't at least in my opinion much big news on these fronts but uh the division there's a new manhunt that came out this week on tuesday um it didn't come out at least as far as i could tell with any other big content updates they did do a fairly big patch that was supposed to fix a bunch of stuff i'm pretty sure it broke a bunch of stuff too that's just kind of the way that's going right now i'm i just don't have the time to care or worry about it um but the new manhunt was interesting um, it was definitely uh, a little unique compared to the other ones where you had to do like five completely different activities. Um, but they reintroduced a character from a side mission from the OG game story. Uh, and from the leaks and stuff I've seen, that person may play a pretty big role moving forward. So I'm, uh, that was really exciting. Um, this new division content, I just, I'm not super interested in the actual content, but they've been doing cool stuff with the story. And I think that's going to continue. It's just kind of a bummer that it takes so long for them to get through the whole story. I get that they're trying to bring people back and stuff. Um, so I, I'll deal with it. I'll be coming back because I like what I've been seeing. Um, but yeah, new manhunt is fun, but if not unremarkable, but it's still a cool little mission. And, uh, if you uh, forgot about it, I suggest that you go check it out. And then for mass effect, I'm recording this on October 7th, the evening and one uh, month from now, we, it will be in seven day and we will hopefully have gotten something, uh, from that. So, um, I did a whole video kind of guessing what we may or may not get for N7 Day. My, I think the best case scenario is a, is a new teaser trailer of some type. I think the worst case scenario is just a blog. I think what we'll get is something in the middle. I think we'll get a blog. I think we'll maybe get some like concept art. Um, I would actually like an interview with like Mike Gamble. Um, obviously a teaser trailer would be really cool, but even just like a five to 10 minute interview with Gamble kind of talking about the legacy of mass effect, kind of what, even if they aren't going to give specifics yet, cause I I'm assuming they won't, uh, just to have, just to hear something. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm excited. Obviously, uh, I still think that we won't get like a big blockbuster in seven day until next year when I think that the game's probably going to be a couple years away from being done and probably after Dreadwolf has released, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. I don't know. So stick around. Okay. Listener questions. Uh, if you have any gaming news stories, topics, or questions for me to talk about on the next podcast, please join the discord and check out the questions or topics room to ask me questions for next week. Uh, this week we have master prime with a few questions. Uh, the first one here is if more games use unreal engine five, will games become more similar under the skin? Um, I think you know you see that a little bit with like Unreal Engine 4 and with the older 3 that you saw people talk about how um, all of the games using those engines shared like some of the same bugs and stuff that were just uh, 
part of the engine uh, in that some of the lower, like the indie and double A games, you would even notice like shared assets and stuff like that. Um, so like you're saying like under the skin. So like I think AAA games, all these AAA games who are moving to Unreal will have a unique look and art style and all of that. Under the skin, that will be a, a different challenge because you'll have to have like engineers and programmers and stuff who can use that template of Unreal Engine 5 and then dig into the guts and make the game unique to them. Um, because, you know, if two Unreal Engine 5 games use the same like stock cover system and shooting mechanics, uh, even if two games are very different, you're going to notice that these feel the same because they're also probably going to feel the same as the next Gears of War, which this new engine is being used to make. Um, if you don't know, uh, the Coalition, who's an Xbox studio, and Epic and their Unreal team are like super tight. Um, Gears of War was a really big showcase for Unreal Engine. And uh, even like, like in Mass Effect 2 and 3, you'll notice that if you, if you pay attention to the uh, combat and the cover mechanics and the movement, it's Gears of War. So that's a that's one of that's an example of what you said uh, about these games feeling the same under the skin is, you know, it seems like uh, Bioware didn't spend a lot of time making their uh, shooting movement and cover system feel uh, unique from the stock Unreal Engine stuff uh, because it's very Gears of War E. Uh, the second part of this question from Master Prime was, uh, do you think having your own engine is worth it? I think it can be in the like medium term. Uh, it seems like a lot of these studios do some of their best work after they've um, started their own engine and released a couple games on it. And then they hit like this hot stride for a few games. But then like I talked about before, that the cost of keeping that engine, keeping it up with the Joneses, you know, keeping it up to date, it just seems like a lot of studios are unable or unwilling to do that. And I think, uh, I, so I think it is worth it until it isn't. Uh, and that's a terrible question. Uh, and then the final question, uh, have you played Sleeping Dogs yet? I haven't. Easy one. Uh, so if you have any of your own questions for next week, uh, leave them in the comments of the YouTube video or join up with the, the Discord. Uh, the, the link for that should be in the description. And come and hang out. Come, uh, come chat about games, uh, you know, the podcast, things like that. Um, you can also come by and, um, you know, do, do your thing with, uh, you know, uh, sports. We talk about sports all the time and things like that. So there we go. Okay. Uh, so content updates. The only one I really have is I am doing a mass effect giveaway as kind of a, a celebration of the lead up to N seven day. So from now until N seven day, uh, if you go to the at bond diesel or at the echo cast Twitter pages, you can, um, uh, follow, uh, and retweet a tweet that's pinned currently. Uh, and then down the, in the replies, just say why you like mass effect. Uh, I will take all of the people who do those things, uh, put them into a pot, pick a winner, and on N7 day this year, I will pick a winner, and you will get, it's like $300 worth of merch. It's so much merch, I have to send it in two boxes. Uh, so it is a USA only giveaway. It, the, the cost to send it in the USA is going to be a lot. The cost to send it outside would just be stupid. Uh, I I can't do it. So um, even if you can't participate, though, I would appreciate if you would share it with other people who may be interested. And that's where we're going to wrap this baby up. So um, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're on Spotify or iTunes, please rate the podcast. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment down below. Even if it's just to say hi, it helps with the algorithm. It helps get people listening. You can find me all over the internet as Bond Diesel uh, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram, and over on Twitch. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the show or my other content and getting some perks with it, check out patreon.com slash Bond Diesel. That is all I have. So old Red Eyes is going to say, until next time. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital.